Hi, everybody. Um, this is going to basically be probably my first music reaction. Um, I don't think my channel is set up right for me to be able to play the song. And I've already listened to it several times now. I still get choked up just talking about it. But today, it was officially dropped a brand new song from the Beatles. The last Beatles song. And the name of the song is called Now and Then. And if you get a chance, whether if you're a Beatles fan or not, go and listen to it. I sat and listened to it earlier this evening. I waited till everybody had gone to bed and I could just go sit by myself. And I cried like a baby. That's just how deeply it touched me. And as I sat and I listened to the song, I could feel the spirit of John Lennon just envelop me. And I heard him simply say, throw the guards on it. Now, I don't know if he followed doing tarot or that kind of thing, or if he believed in any of it. I don't think it really matters. Because where he is now, he knows what's real and what's not. But I must say, listening to it, it felt like it was a very prophetic song. He wrote this and recorded it on a little cassette player, just a demo that he did at his house. Back in 19, uh, in the early 1970s, I forget what year. And it was just something that Yoko had, you know, because we lost John just a few years later in, 80, 81, I, I forget which year. I guess I should have looked all that up first. But um, anyone who's ever been to any of my social media pages, y'all know that. John Lennon had a very profound effect on me and my life through his music. His song, Imagine, is one that I try to live my life by because I feel very strongly about the message in that song. And I feel like that is probably the closest thing to the truth that we as mere humans can get to. And he so eloquently put it to music. And this is another one. From what I understood, I, I watched a little short, um, like a, an excerpt of a documentary that they made about this song. John wrote it back in the 70s and then was ruthlessly and cruelly taken from us just a few years later when he was murdered. And back in the 90s, when the remaining Beatles got back together to do the anthology uh, where they remastered and redid a lot of their music. Um, George had uh, spoke to Yoko, John's wife, uh, to talk about, you know, they wished that they had something of his that had never been heard before. 
And Yoko was like, oh, yeah, I've got something. And so she gave John the tape, just a little cassette tape. And George brought it to, to Paul and to Ringo so that they could listen to it. And it wasn't a very good recording, you know. It was just a demo that he did at home on a cassette recorder. And a lot of times the piano, as he played piano, I'm already crying, as he played piano, it, there were times when it kind of drowned out his voice and you couldn't really hear John sing as clearly. Well, in the 90s, uh, when Paul and Ringo worked with, and George uh, worked with, um, I forget now what company it was, to, to remaster, to do the anthology and re-release all their music. And they tried to do this song, but because the recording was not that well, and we just didn't have the technology back then to be able to separate out all of the different sounds. If it's, you know, if you had recorded on a multi-track player, like they usually do in studios, then of course you can pull out each individual person singing, instrument playing, that kind of stuff. But just something on a little cassette recorder on a tape at home, it's all together in one. There's no, There was no way to separate those sounds. And so they tried working on it and it just, it just didn't work. But in the process, George Harrison uh, recorded um, music to go with that song, uh, doing slide guitar and some other guitar riffs and stuff that he did to go with this song. And because they just couldn't make it work, we just the technology just didn't exist. They wound, wound up just shelving it. And as Paul said, you know, he figured, well, it's just something that just wasn't meant to be. But then fast forward a few years, we lost George. And, you know, he had cancer and passed away. And so the only ones left now are Paul and Ringo. And they're both getting up there in age, <laughs> you know. Um, and when the director, Peter Jackson, from the Lord of the Rings trilogy fame, when he did the documentary called Get Back on the Beatles and their explosion into all of our lives and carried through their career and everything, it's, it's a really fabulous, fabulous documentary. I would highly suggest watch it if you haven't seen it already. I think it's on Disney+. Plus, But... During the filming of that documentary, while they were working on it, Peter Jackson and his technicians, because they were trying to separate out the sounds of old recordings that just wasn't recorded on very good equipment, because it was, you know, 50s, 60s, they just didn't have that then, um, they developed a uh, new software that worked with AI to um, enable them to be able to go into a solid recording, a single track recording and separate out all the different voices and instruments. It's really truly groundbreaking from what I understand. Um, something good about AI, I guess you could say. And, um, And as they did that and they did the documentary and they released it uh, last year for Christmas, I believe it was when it came out. Um, Paul started thinking about it again. Maybe we can finally do this song. And so he got with Ringo and Ringo was like, yeah, let's do it, you know. And so they brought the, the cassette recording to Peter Jackson and said, can you work your magic on this so that we can finish the song. 
And so Peter Jackson got together with his people and they did, and they were able to pull it out and separate John's voice just so crystal clear. And so Paul and Ringo went back into the studio and they did the backup singing, you know, the background singing harmonies. And uh, they, Paul added his bass, Ringo added his drums. Um, they had some of George's guitar because he did a lot of slide guitar. And, uh, but it didn't, I don't know, for whatever reason, it didn't work as well. And so Paul had to replay his, George's part. So, and as he said, he tried to do it as close to the way that George would have played it. And it, yeah, it's pretty damn close. So anyway, to get through all of that, to just try to explain what's getting ready to, it's dropping tomorrow, I believe it is, the documentary, the new documentary and everything. They dropped the song today, but tomorrow the, the documentary gets dropped. Uh, I think it goes out live uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Central Time is when it will hit. And... Um, and so this evening when I got home from work, I, I've seen the song. I had it saved in my YouTube watch later pile for about two days. And I just hadn't listened to it yet because I just didn't know if I wanted to hear it or not. And then when I got home from work today, my son and I were talking about it. And he was like, oh, no, mom, you got to listen to this. He was like, you, you're, it's going to blow your mind. This is fantastic. I raised my boy right <laughs> He loves the Beatles. <laughs> and um, and I said, well, I'll probably listen to it later after everybody settles down and I can go sit outside by myself, put my earbuds in and just go into the music. And that's what I did. And it was overwhelming. And it really... It really caught me off guard with how emotion it makes me feel. It was like having John sitting there singing to. That's how clear his voice is on this recording. He did a really good job. And as I was sitting there listening to it and booing my eyes out, that's when I felt John just envelop me. And I heard him say very clearly, throw the cards. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, like I said, I don't think I'm, I'm set up so that I can play music. Um, they'd probably strike me and make me pull it. And I don't want to, I don't want that to happen. So I'm not going to play the song, but I'm going to put a link in. So you can go and listen to it yourself and just try to do it with an open mind and, and just remember that this was 50 plus years in the making and two of the main players aren't even here anymore and they were still able to pull this off. So I'm going to do a quick pause, get my act together and wipe my eyes again. Um, and uh, I'm going to, switch cameras and I'm going to throw the cards and we're going to see what it is they, that John wants us to know. So um, hang on and let me do a little magic in the switcher room here and we'll get with it. Okay. I am back. I got my tape set up here. I've been shuffling the cards for a while, and I'm using my uh, my light sears deck. Um, but let's uh, do a little bit more shuffling here, and we're gonna just uh, 
do a simple five card pull and just get a feel for what it is that uh, John wants us to know about this and um, what exactly it is he wants us to say that he wants to say to us. Right. Let's see what we got here. All right, I think I'm going to have to probably put these upside down so that y'all can see it. I got to remember I'm going backwards here. Okay. Now then, let's see what we're looking at. Okay, first up, we've got the Ace of Swords. Okay, starting out, we've got the Ace of Swords. This talks about new ideas, um, clarity on topics, an aha moment. I know hearing this song was a very aha moment for me. Um, it's bringing to mind an awareness um, or a heightened state of consciousness. It, that's what it feels like John's trying to get across is um, to, to, to open up our communication to go a little deeper, to go into our consciousness and know what it is. What's the message that's trying to come across to us? And then next up, we have the Three of Wands, which talks about um, manifesting energy, um, new opportunities arriving, um, moving in the right direction. The fact that this song sat on the shelf for over 50 years speaks volumes about waiting for that right moment for it to be released. They tried to do it several, what, 20 years ago or so, and it just didn't work. It wasn't time. But I think now that culture, society as a whole, we are now in that place of wanting new opportunities. And I think that's part of what John was trying to get across to us is there are new opportunities here. Next up, we have the Seven of Cups. Choices, wishful thinking, um, thinking about what could have been or what should have been. I mean, there are many times when I stop and think about what would the world be like musically if he was still here. And it's kind of uncanny, but if you look at the picture here of, of the guy with the cups, kind of looks a little like John. John had hair about that long. And a lot of times he wore that kind of hat. The first thing I, I saw when I looked at this card was, was like, wow, it looks like John in there. As he contemplates all of the emotions that this song is going to bring out in people. Now, granted, there are going to be people who don't like it. Are there going to be people who are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just trying to do whatever. Trying to make a buck. And I think that they're missing the essence of what this song is going to mean for a lot of people. And once you listen to it, 
and re I mean, really listen to it. Listen to the words of what's being sung. I think it's going to have a very profound effect on a lot of people. Um, next up, we have temperance. Where again, you're talking about harmonies, balances, you know, balancing our, our, our feminine and our masculine energies. Because they have to harmonize. They have to work together. And I see that as how like John, who sang beautiful harmony, especially he and Paul when they sang together. Their voices just blended so well together. He's going to have this card of harmony and balance come out into the throat. You know, it's it's finding that purpose in your life. I think that's part of his message is for us to harmonize with one another, to balance our energies, to learn to flow with one another as we go through life. Because there's so much that's just so up in the air right now. Um, and then the last card is the Five of Pentacles. Now, a lot of times people look at this as a bad card or a depressing card or, you know, a not very good card to get. Um, but I think... What I'm feeling is that John's trying to tell us this is our chance to clear out the blocked energy in our life so that we have the ability to harmonize and to balance everything. We have to clear all that blocked energy and get all of that out in order to feel the balance and the harmony that bring us so much joy and peace. And again, you're looking at wishful thinking, choices, um, moving forward, even when you can't see the next step. That's a concept that the Bible also teaches when it talks about, you know, the lamp only lights your your steps as you take them. You only see the step that you're on. You can't see what the next step is. So you take that step in faith. Um, whenever I think of that, I always think of the um, uh, one of the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark movies. Um, the last one, what was that called? Um, the Last Crusade, the Final Crusade. It was the one with Sean Connery as Harrison Ford's dad. And when they got to the place where they were going to find the grail, and there was a scene where it looked like this huge chasm between one side to the other side. And Indiana Jones realizes in that moment, that there's no way he could possibly jump that distance, but that he had to just step out in a step of faith that there was going to be a way for him to cross at that precise place. And there was. It was all of um, an optical illusion of a bridge that was already there. But you wouldn't have known it if you didn't step out and take that step of faith. And so whenever I think of this card, that's one of the things I think about. It reminds me of that movie. I mean, all together, it's, it's, it's I don't know about y'all, but I feel very powerful with this. I mean, it's all about, it's all about clearing out what's blocking us opening ourselves up to new ideas, to new energies, balancing our energies, balancing our chakras, um, making sure that 
that we're moving in the right direction. And I think with this song, it's going to be sad for a lot of us because it's going to bring back sentimental memories and the what could have, what should have been. And it just makes you feel that way. But it's a very beautiful song. It's almost, it's almost a haunting song, the way it sounds, the way it's sung. Um, he probably meant it as a love song. That's what it sounds like to me, like he was writing a love song to Yoko, um, which would be so John, right? But listening to it now, 50-something years later, it comes across more to me of, again, that prophetic voice of saying there was now, there was then. We balance the two. You need one for the other. You can't enjoy one without the other. And so I think it's very important for us to be able to, to be willing to take that step when you can't see what the next step is going to bring you. But you have faith that spirit is leading you in the right direction. You're putting your faith in spirit, in God, in Allah, in Buddha, in whatever it is that you pray to or that you hold up. To help you make the spiritual decisions in your life that you make. This is just. Like I said, I had that aha moment when I listened to the song the first time. And then I found myself sitting there and crying like a baby. Literally tears running down my face. And y'all saw me just trying to talk about it at the beginning. Tears running down my face. So, let's see. Let me switch cameras back. I'll be right back and we'll wrap this up. Got the camera switched back. Got my virtual background up because it's a mess behind me and I don't want y'all looking at that. So... Thanks for indulging me tonight. I mean, this is kind of something new for me. I normally don't do this. Um, I wish I knew for sure if I could actually be able to play the song, but I'm worried that they might copyright strike me and make me pull the video down. And so, like I said, I'm going to put a link to the song directly um, in the description box so you can click on it and go listen after you watch this and tomorrow in the morning, uh, Friday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central and on down the line from there, um, they're releasing the documentary of making this and doing it. And uh, it looks like it's going to be really good. It's supposed to be Peter Jackson's first music video that he's ever directed. And um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what he does. Um, he's he, he, he does such beautiful work. He truly has a vision. But um, I'm just glad that Paul and Ringo are still here to at least be able to wrap all of this up and um, too big of a reflection there. And so... Thank y'all for letting me come blubber to everyone. Um, I can't wait to see the documentary tomorrow and see the official, you know, I don't know if the, the music video itself is going to, I've heard that it's going to have like, you know, old footage and whatnot put to the song. And that ought to make it really interesting. Right now, it's just the audio that they've got out there. And that's what I'll link. And then I will also put the link in for the um, live premiere tomorrow when they drop everything. 
So um, y'all have a great night. Thank you for indulging me. Um, since I'm kind of up and in the mood, maybe I can get a few more videos done. Got a few more decks of cards I need to do flip throughs on that I kind of been putting off doing. It's called being lazy. Not really lazy, just busy. Um, Y'all have a great weekend. Um, I'll be on uh, the Cool Crone tomorrow night at, um, I think it's 6 o'clock Central for Polyterology. It'll be Colleen, the Cool Crone, uh, on her channel. Well, we'll all be simulcasting to our channels, but she'll be the host. And it'll be me and her and uh, Val, Dragonfly Crystals, uh, Cleo the Seer, and Gerald from Terror Stash. Um, and then Saturday is a free day because I got a lot of stuff I got to get done. So I didn't schedule anything. Sunday, I've got three shows back to back. I must be crazy. So if y'all have a little bit of time to kill on Sunday, Come and check one of them out. And um, got some new stuff coming. Uh, some exciting interviews. Uh, interviews. Some exciting uh, shows and stuff coming up. Working on scheduling stuff. Um, I'm getting ready to put together my annual holiday stressors video. So I'll be sending an email out to all my fellow readers for who would like to join me with that. And um, my friend Isaac, who's a professional counselor, he did it with me last year. He's coming back again this year to do it with me again. And uh, hopefully we'll get a few other people to join us. Just, you know, tips and tricks and ideas on how to de-stress and not wig out over the holidays because the silly season makes us all crazy. Um, and also how to keep from stressing out your animals, your pets. That's very important, too. Thank you all again for indulging me. Forgive me for crying, but I just couldn't help it. It was so overwhelming. I just had to get it out. Thank you, John, for telling me to uh, come pull cards to get your thoughts. Because they, uh, they're very encouraging, is how I'm looking at it. So y'all have a good night, and I'll catch everyone over the weekend. Love you, everybody. Bye for now.